All right, I'm going to tell you two stories. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the issues I've been working on. Um, Dick Saslow made a joke recently, uh, just, just now, about uh, uh, legislating before some of us were born. Um, and then he looked at me and Marcus. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you a story that's actually true. In uh, 1979, uh, my, uh, uh, I got a knock on the door. My mom said, go, go answer the door. It was out in, uh, here in Fairfax, and uh, this tall man, very thin, was at my door. It was Dick Saslaw, door knocking. <laughs> and he said, can you get your mommy and have her come to the door? <laughs> and uh, I did. And uh, my mom talked to him for maybe five, ten minutes, and she came back out, and all she said was, I hope you can be like, I hope you grow up to be the kind of young man that he is. <laughs> and <laughs> Somewhere in there, there's a compliment. Right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, when he talks about legislating before I was born, then you know, yeah. technically, it's sort of me. Um, the other story is this. It goes back to something that the good professor talked about earlier. Um, beginning of last year's session, not this year, last year's session, a prominent member of the other party got up on the floor and talked about how all of society's and the state's problems were from the cities. And the rural communities were upstanding good people who lived by God's law. But all those darn cities, they just stopped being so evil. We'd get through life better. And uh, a bunch of us in the Progressive Caucus looked at each other and said, did he really just say that? Um, it goes to the idea of the other that the professor was talking about. It goes to the idea, if you don't see it, you don't feel it, you don't touch it, then it doesn't exist. And that's wrong. That shows a lack of empathy. That shows a lack of, of, of care. That shows a lack of the fact that we are a commonwealth. And by that, we mean we're all in it together. And that just because you don't see it, just because you maybe think, have a, a more of a Calvinist or predestination idea about your view of the world, that's also wrong. We're not predestined to be one way or the other. We're not predestined to be poor. When you hear the stories of, just on Medicaid, expansion, of individuals who had professional careers and got ill, and lost their job, and then became bankrupt because of their bills, the gut-wrenching, heart-rending stories, and then you don't do something on Medicaid expansion. Well, I, I, it's not just an economic development argument, it's a moral argument. So, thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Uh, let me tell you about one step forward and three steps back. Now, I'm not the kind of person who says, if I uh, don't get the perfect bill, then uh, I'm just gonna throw my hands up there and walk away. If I get 15% of what I want, 10% the next year, 5%, 25% the year after that, and eventually I'm gonna get what I want. And so this year we took a step forward on the renewable portfolio standard in Virginia. Renewable energy is the right thing to do for the Commonwealth. We could be the leader in the entire Mid-Atlantic on renewable energy. Solar in the Shenandoah Valley, wind off the coast. The best place in America to grow switchgrass is Martinsville, Virginia. The best place in America to grow switchgrass is Martinsville, Virginia. Hydrokinetic in our rivers. We could be the leader in renewable energy, but we just don't have the will to take that step forward. The fact is this. We actually allowed our folks to... I only have one minute. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> we actually allowed... Um, we took a step forward. We said, you cannot bank your renewable energy credits indefinitely. We said you can, only, you can only limit them to five years, which is an important step because now that provides an incentive to actually put steel in the ground. So I'm very happy about that, and that's a baby step towards eventually getting the mandatory report, 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 renewable portfolio standard we need. Two, three steps backwards. The DREAM Act. We thought this was the year. We had, you know, before I, before before I got in the House delegates, we had never actually gotten the, the DREAM Act out of the, out of the House subcommittee. 
Last year, we got it unanimously out of subcommittee in 17 to 4 out of the full education committee. This year, we got it unanimously out of subcommittee in 19 to 3 out of the full education committee. But they sent it immediately to the House Appropriations Committee with the intention to kill it because they don't want to vote on this issue, which I think is basic. Children brought to the United States through no fault of their own who do incredibly well in our schools and should be bringing their talent back to the Commonwealth are being denied basic access to improving and bettering their life. And more importantly, if you think of us as a talent-based society, as Tim Kaine says, we're competing not just against other states but other countries for economic development dollars. We need to keep the best talent here in Virginia. So what does it say when valedictorians of some of the best high schools in America up here in Northern Virginia, who are undocumented, can't get into UVA, or can't afford to go to UVA, can't afford to go to George Mason, can't afford to go to Nova, but get full rides to go to some private university outside of Virginia. They're not gonna come back to Virginia and bring their talent that we've developed K through 12. Well, I'm out of time, thank you, Pam. Um, but I don't blame you, I just look at you. Uh, two other issues regarding gun violence prevention. I'm the only person who put in uh, background checks bills this year. And then also regarding affordable housing. I'm giving that an incomplete. They took out the $8 million to help capitalize the affordable housing trust fund I was able to get, get created um, for Virginia a, a year and a half ago. We need to make sure that we continue to capitalize that trust fund in ways that would bring us just to some kind of parity with other states. Because we desperately need, we desperately need affordable housing, especially in Northern Virginia. So thank you for everything you do. And I really appreciate it. And I look forward to working with you in the future.